In this video we're going to work on solving complex circuits. So let's go ahead and write down the given we have for this problem. So we know that the voltage from the source is 15 volts. The resistance for A is 10 ohms, 30 ohms for B and C, and 20 ohms for resistor D. The units of resistance are ohms, amps for current, volts for voltage and watts for power. Alright, so in this problem we see it's a complex circuit because there aren't distinct routes. What I mean by that is that resistor A is on the route with B and C and resistor A is also on the route with D. So to solve this I need to use a strategy called equivalent resistance. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look for any resistors that are going to receive the same current. Basically any resistors where I don't see an intersection between them. So if we're looking for that, it turns out that resistors B and C are on the same path. There's no split between them, so those two resistors must be in series. All right, what that means is I can redraw that blue line and just put one resistor on it and combine them with the equivalent resistance for equation for series resistors, which is simply adding them together. So now I want to go ahead and redraw my circuit. So I still have my battery. I still have resistor A, which is 10 ohms. But now, where I used to have resistors B and C, I'm just going to draw one resistor called BC. And I'm going to say resistor BC has a resistance of 60 ohms. And I got BC by doing 30 ohms plus 30 ohms. And we still have resistor D over here at 20 ohms. Alright, so next I'm going ahead and I'm looking for any resistors that are going to get the same current. So any that are still in series. But between every resistor, so I know the current will come out, go through A, but it'll split. Some will go to B, C, and some will go to D. So there aren't any more resistors in series. That means there must be two resistors that are in parallel. So parallel means that at a split, there are two paths before the current rejoins, and those two paths each have one resistor. So BC and D are in parallel. All right, so now I'm going to redraw the circuit. I still have resistor A that's 10 ohms. But now instead of B, C, and D, I'm going to combine all of those into one resistor that I'm going to call resistor B, C, D. Now, since they're in parallel, I have to use the parallel equation. So for B, C, D, I know that I'm going to do 1 divided by 1 over 60 plus 1 over 20. Alright, going ahead and plugging that in. I get a resistance of 15 ohms. Alright, so BCD is 15 ohms. I feel good about that answer because it should be smaller than either resistor that I combine together in parallel. Alright, now lastly, if I look at it from A to BCD, there's no intersection between them, so any current that flows through A has to flow through BCD. So those are in series, and I can simply combine them by adding them together, and I'm left with just one resistor in my circuit, and that resistor, resistor A, B, C, D, I'll do 10 ohms plus 15 ohms, and I get 25 ohms. Alright, basically what is, this is saying is that one single 25 ohm resistor will draw as much current as this entire circuit right here. I'm going to go ahead and place that in my source row as it described in the problem. Alright, so the next thing I want to do 
is I know that I have two parts of any row, I can solve the row. And right now I have enough to solve this for the source. So I'm going to use the equation that I equals V divided by R just for the source. So 15 divided by 25 gives me 0 0.6 amps coming out of my battery. So I have 0 0.6 amps coming out. I know that that 0 0.60 is going to take a right hand turn here and all of that is going to travel into resistor A. So 0 0.6 might as well go ahead and calculate the voltage by doing V equals I times R, which I'll use for everything else in this row. So 10 times 0.6 gives me 6 volts right here. Alright, next I know that 0 0.60 amps is going to continue over here. Alright, when it hits that intersection, it'll split. And some will go down, and some will go to the right. Now I know this won't split evenly because I know that more current always tends to travel towards less resistance. But I can use something called the current splitting equation. So the current splitting equation states that the current that will take one path is equal to the total current you have times the ratio of the resistance, the equivalent resistance, divided by the resistance on that path. And when I say the equivalent resistance, I'm referring to the resistance between the split and where all of the current comes back together. Not just some of it, but make sure it's where all the current comes back together, which it will in this case before going back to the battery right here. All right, so I can go ahead and take a look at this and figure out my current that will travel to BC. So the current that will travel to BC is going to equal 0 0.60 times the equivalent resistance which came from right here BCD so of 15 divided by the resistance on that path will be and C are on that path so 0 0.6 um, times 15 over 60 and that should give me 0 0.15 amps if I want to find how much current is traveling towards D then I can do the same equation except the current on the path for D would equal, or the resistance on the path for D would be 20. So that current will be 0 0.45 amps. I feel really good about my answer right now because I know that 60, 0 0.60, splits up into 0 0.15 and 0 0.45. Remember, the current you have coming into an intersection has to equal the current that comes out of the intersection. Alright, so going, coming back to my chart on the left hand side, I can fill out that 0 0.15 amps went through B and also is going to travel into C. And then 0 0.45 amps will travel into D. Alright, then multiplying across using V equals I times R, Ohm's law, we get 30 times 0.15 gives me 4.5 volts for B and C and for D 20 times 0.45 gives me 9 volts. Alright, I can use the voltage. There are a lot of different ways to solve this problem. Sometimes some people find the voltage first. I'm going to use the voltage to check my answer. So if I know that I trace one route, so let me get rid of this highlighting for a second. Every time I trace a route I need to use all of the voltage provided by the battery. So on this first route, I had 15 volts. I gained 15 volts from the battery. I used 6 volts at A and 4.5 and at B and C. 6 plus 4.5 and plus 4 and a half adds up to 15. So I feel good about that answer. If I look at my other route, 
traveling just through A and D, I know the voltages for A and D should add up to 15. Again, 6 plus 9 gives me 15, and I'm feeling great about my answers. All right, lastly, we can just calculate the power by using the equation P equals I times V. To calculate the power, so 15 times 0.6 gives me that the battery is putting out 9 watts. That's 9 joules every second. 3.6 watts are dissipated at A. Zero point six seven five watts are dissipated at B and C. Four point oh five watts are dissipated at D. If I do three point six plus point six seven five plus point six seven five plus 4.05, so if I add up all of the power that's dissipated at the resistors, I get 9 watts, and I feel great about my answer because of conservation of energy tells me that any power coming from the battery needs to be dissipated at the resistors.